Hi there, ladies and gentlemen. This is Mr. Workman, and this is going to be your screencast for Basic Chemistry, your screencast session five. In this particular screencast, I'm going to go through what chemical reactions are and what equations are. And if you look at this word equations, the word equal is the root of that word and how the word equal um, relates to what equations are and what they must be. So <clears throat> here's your first main idea, chemical reactions. Uh, and what a reaction is, it's going to involve either the formation and breaking um, of chemical bonds. And these bonds could be... Uh, ionic bonds or co covalent bonds, it doesn't matter. But essentially what's happening is groups of atoms are breaking up and rearranging in different patterns. And this is a particular uh, chemical reaction that's depicted in this diagram. And what we have is two smaller molecules essentially joining uh, together to make a larger molecule. And if that happens over and over again, you can get these big long chains of these huge molecules. But in order for that to happen, some bonds need to be broken and then some different bonds need to form over here. And the result of that can actually either take in energy or release energy depending on uh, the bond energies involved. Um, but what we're really talking about here, of course, is you know the reasons for doing this um, are going to be um, necessary for life because you, you need to build new molecules for living structures. Um, we need to have established a, a way to establish stability in our atomic structures, um, and then management of energy. Um, every time you eat, you're gaining energy in a way, and your body and your digestive systems and the organs involved in your digestive system are going to be breaking those bonds down and forming new bonds, and energy is going to be released to you um, to use for the processes of your life. So. The other thing to consider here is how is it that we read a chemical equation. Um, a chemical equation is describing how a reaction is um, happening or how a reaction could happen. And generally what we think about is the stuff on the left is what you're starting with. Those are what we call reactants. And the stuff that the arrow is pointing to is what we call products. So. Um, of course, what they're going to provide for us is, you know, the elements that are involved in the reaction. So that's the type of atoms involved. It's going to show us the number of atoms involved in the reaction. And of course, what the reactants are, that's what the combinations of atoms are to start the reaction, uh, are. And then the products and the products of the reaction are how those atoms have been recombined after the uh, bonds were broken and then reformed in different ways. So <clears throat> when we read this chemical reaction, what this is is telling me that I've got CO2 here, and that molecule is carbon dioxide, and this molecule is water. And what it is is that carbon dioxide is reacting with water, and it's producing this sugar molecule, and a fancy word for sugar is carbohydrate, and oxygen. Um, now, this is actually the overall um, reaction that we use to describe how photosynthesis works. And these words, light and chlorophyll, um, what they are is they're telling us that it takes light and this pigment called chlorophyll to make that reaction happen. Not all chemical reactions will have something like that listed by the arrow. Now, <clears throat> some more information that you're going to be able to get from chemical equations is, um, and something that you're going to have to learn how to decipher, is looking at these various numbers. Now, these numbers that are in front of the molecule compound formulas, these numbers are called coefficients. It's just like coefficients in an algebra expression. So um, this, this oxygen here in the product side has a coefficient. This carbon dioxide has a coefficient. And the water has a coefficient. The water molecule has a coefficient. This, this molecule is not showing a coefficient. The numbers that are in subscript are not coefficient molecules. Those just refer to the particular symbols that are in front. So <clears throat> this tells me I have two oxygen atoms. But that's not a coefficient. Coefficient tells you the number of co total combined molecules that you have. So there's six carbon dioxide molecules here, there's six water molecules here, and there's six oxygen molecules here. And of course, those molecules are groups of atoms bonded together. CO2, carbon dioxide, is a compound, as water is. And O2 is a, is a molecule, but it is not a compound. <clears throat> Notice I told you there was no coefficient right here, but if there is no coefficient, uh, what's implied is that there is a 1. So these list the numbers of our molecules in a reaction. 
the subscript numbers tells you, again, each kind of atom on each side of the equation. So if we go ahead and count up the C's and the O's and the H's on this side of the equation, as well, on this, as, well as on this side of the equation, it's going to give us our total numbers. And what you need to do is, if there's a subscript involved, you need to multiply the subscript by the coefficient number. So this 6 tells me I have 6 carbons. But <clears throat> this 6 and this 2 together tells me I have uh, 12 oxygens there, but then I have to count up this 6 times uh, 1 oxygen over here in the water molecule. And the 6 times the 2 here tells me I have 12 hydrogens. And if we go ahead and multiply as we need to and add up what we need to over here, we should find that the same number and type of atom um, are found on both sides of the arrow. Because if that weren't the case, then we wouldn't have equal amounts of atoms. And if, unless you have equal amounts of atoms on the reactant and product side, you can't fairly call this a, uh, or an equation, I should say. <clears throat> so uh, again, real quick math here, 6 times 2 is 12. And then these 6 oxygens, 12 plus 6, adds up to 18, right? Here's my 6 carbons over here now. And the 12 hydrogens comes from the 12 after this H. And again, you'll notice that these numbers are equal on both sides of the reaction, which means it's an equation. The reason why we have to have equal numbers of atoms on both sides of the equation is that uh, we have this law of conservation of matter, which simply states that we can't create matter, we can't destroy matter. It only gets rearranged and recombined in different forms through the process of chemical reactions. So <clears throat> what that generally means is molecules can be broken up and reformed in different patterns, but atoms in and of themselves are forever. Okay? And that's it for this screencast. Hopefully you learned something. We'll see you next time.